welcome everybody to the binder update video for this week. This is a very special one. We'll talk about that as we go in, but I hope you guys are doing well today. Truth be told, this video almost didn't happen, uh, but thankfully because of a very special person in the It Resolves community, we were able to finish this one off and actually get a full page of cards in that we can talk about in today's video. Now importantly, we're going to save those special cards for the very end, however, we actually do have some incredible value and some really awesome stuff to talk about as well that is unrelated to all of that. We've got some amazing cards to look through. I think we're gonna go ahead and jump right in. Let's do it. Let's see what we got in this week's Binder update. All right, guys, here we are with our very first card. It is a beautiful Merfolk God. I'm not even gonna try and pronounce the name, but uh, I, this actually came up on the Scryfall random choose or picker or whatever. And I realized how strong this card is. It's amazing in Merfolk. Uh, and it's a borderless card, which you guys know I am a huge fan of. I do love picking up a lot of borderless cards. This isn't actually the only one that we're gonna see today. Uh, we do have a lot already in the binder as well. Uh, but there's something special about these borderless cards. Cards. They're not always high value, but in general, they obviously are going to be a little bit higher value than just the normal editions of any of these given cards. But I really love this one. I found like th this is just insanely powerful for Merfolk, so I was very happy to pick this up. Next up, we have Bridge from Below, but not just any Bridge from Below. This is the original version uh, from, I believe, Future Sight. I will mention this card is banned in, I believe, Modern, uh, and for good reason. I love good dre dredge or graveyard-focused decks, things like that. Uh, Hollow Vine is one of my favorite decks. I think it's just an absolute blast to play. Bridge from Below was a really good way of putting those decks over the top. Uh, it allowed you to create a bunch of extra tokens, hopefully deal a lot more damage very quickly, and finish off the game very quickly. And because you can utilize a lot of cards that put stuff into your graveyard, maybe a blood gas, you sacrifice it to something and then you bring it back with the land drop, there were just endless ways to trigger this card, uh, which really put it over the top. Uh, now, I actually have a full playset of this card in the Modern Masters Edition, but I never actually owned the original version. Uh, and so I was really happy to pick this one up because, again, that, that cool card frame that they did during that time was so unique and it's never been seen since. Uh, and I think that's, there's something really special to that. And so I was really excited to pick this one up. I think it's a great addition and a great great use of my play style, if that makes sense. So again, graveyard decks being a big focus of mine, it's a really fun way to kind of exemplify what kind of strategies I like to play uh, within the collection itself, which I think is a really cool thing to always do. Uh, another amazing black card here, uh, and it is a promo. You guys know I love promos. It's Dismember. Uh, we actually did just get uh, the spoiler, I believe, that this is going to be a Phyrexian promo. I believe I'm saying that correctly in Dominaria United. Uh, really, really sick. But uh, basically, this is a, a removal spell for a creature that can be played if you needed it to in basically any deck. Uh, there are a lot of decks, again, looking at modern that don't actually run black but still play this card uh, because it's minus five, minus five for essentially one mana and a handful of life. Uh, now, of course, you can pay if you've got the black mana, you can pay that Phyrexian with the black instead of the two life, uh, which is important because, of course, you don't want to lose too much life. But it's a really good way to save yourself a little bit uh, of uh, not necessarily life, but efficiency. Uh, and I think that that's worthwhile in a lot of cases. And so this is one of my favorite removal spells of all time. Uh, it's also a promo. So you guys know, <laughs> I love a good promo. Speaking of, we have Sylvan Scrying, the beautiful promo edition. I really do love this one. Uh, search your library for a land card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. This is a card that I believe was originally printed in, like, Mirrodin, uh, which was a really cool version, actually. I believe it featured Glissa on it. Uh, which is just really awesome. It's really special artwork, I think. Uh, this is a really pretty version. I would argue I like the other artwork better, but this is a promo and, you know, naturally we're gonna, we're gonna throw it in the binder. Uh, this is a really good card for any land-based decks. So a lot of Tron decks used to play this. Uh, a lot of like old school land decks, eternal land decks can utilize this, uh, which is a really fun thing. It is any land, which is why this is so good. It's not a basic land. Uh, uh, two mana sorcery isn't necessarily great, but it's any land in your deck. And if you're looking to 
solidify Tron as an example, uh, being able to just pick out that land immediately is like kind of amazing. So definitely a powerful card. And again, just a really nice promo to have. <clears throat> Keeping that promo train going. Uh, we have got the Ruin Diver. Uh, very cool little card. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, you draw a card. Truthfully, not all that playable most of the time. I mean, it's a pretty cool card. Don't get me wrong. Uh, and I'm sure there are definitely areas you could play it. I'm sure commander players love a card like this, but uh, I am not a commander player. I just like promos. <laughs> and so uh, I did pick this up mostly because of that beautiful artwork. I love artwork like this, which is heavily symmetrical. It just gives you that really empowering feeling, if that makes sense. Uh, and it is a, one of my favorite color combinations, not my all time favorite, but red and blue uh, together is a pretty fun col color combo uh, if you happen to be looking for something like that. So this is a really cool card. Again, just a really pretty card, honestly. That was really the only reason I wanted to pick it up. All right, I told you guys this wasn't our uh, only borderless card, and here is our second. It's Kazmina Enigma Sage. This is the Strixhaven Planeswalker version of Kazmina. Really cool card. Uh, didn't really, to my knowledge at least, see a lot of play, uh, at least not in standard. Um, it's, I, I don't know, kind of an underwhelming Planeswalker, but... Uh, again, I'm not collecting for playability all the time. Sometimes I just like really cool cards and really pretty cards, and I think this falls into that category. Uh, it's nothing crazy. It's nothing spectacular or anything like that. It's not even that expensive, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but it is a really cool card, and it's a nice little piece of magic uh, from, from recent times, because a lot of what I collect is, of course, more historic pieces, a lot older cards, and we'll see that in some of the, the future ones as well. But uh, um, I, I don't know, there was something special about this. I picked up, there was one one uh, version of this series where I picked up just a ton of Borderless Planeswalkers, uh, almost a full page. This will certainly fit in very nicely with the rest of those. All right, speaking of historic pieces, guys, probably the most high value card uh, yet potentially, uh, Null Rod. Um, this is a pretty big one. Uh, it says players cannot play any artifact abilities uh, requiring an activation cost. Um, keeping in mind, this is obviously only legal in like major eternal formats for the most part. Um, that's pretty big. Uh, that's a really big ability. Uh, there's a lot of things that uh, this shuts down. Um, and for that reason, and I believe it's on the reserve list if I'm not mistaken, uh, it fetches a pretty high price tag. I'm really happy to have picked this up because I've never owned a Null Rod. Uh, this is certainly a special one for me. Uh, again, I do like the old school kind of historic that see how far we've come kind of pieces. And I think this is a really good example of that. Uh, just a super powerful, really big prison ability, uh, depending on the format, of course, that you're in. Uh, and again, just an absolutely cool card. I love magic history. And so for me, this is such a cool piece. In fact, I'm reading actually the original Kamigawa novels right now, which I know this isn't Kamigawa, but uh, I'm going back through and reading all of that stuff. And it's just fascinating to, to learn and kind of get the lore behind everything. Cause you know, as I was growing up, I didn't get any of that and so it's cool to see where things come all right we have og sad robot we got solemn guys uh this is just the original version of solemn that was kind of the only reason i picked it up i've got tons of this card obviously been reprinted just uh, to death basically we've seen a million versions of this card every commander set ever uh just tons of stuff but uh, the original version is still pretty cool uh, because it is the original. Uh, and so truthfully, while this wasn't any like crazy expensive pickup or anything like that, it's again just seeing the original version of that original artwork and all that kind of stuff was kind of cool. Uh, and I am actually really stoked because I do look forward to completing my Mirrodin set uh, and this does help me get there. So I just really love the original one. I like originals in general. Originals and promo are like my go-to. Uh, so if anybody ever wants to send me stuff, <laughs> that's how you do it. Uh, but we now move to Stomping Ground, which we're gonna, we're about to get into some really special cards. I'll talk about those in a minute, but Stomping Ground, guys. Uh, this was a card we opened. 
uh, just last week, I believe, we finally opened a fetch, or excuse me, a not a fetch land, a shock land out of uh, an actual pack <laughs> um, that was not a brand new pack. This was the original, obviously, guild packed uh, version of Stomping Ground. There were only three shock lands in the set, and we got the second best, uh, which I'm pretty stoked about, honestly. Uh, normally, you go into those cracker packs expecting that, you know, you're probably going to flop and you're not going to get the, your money's worth or anything like that. This time we did. Uh, and so I knew I had to put this in the collection binder. Uh, I don't think that's cheating because I did pay for the pack. So I think that's worthwhile throwing in there. Uh, and again, it's just a really cool piece. It's the original Shockland. You know what I mean? Like you don't see a lot of the original anymore. These have been reprinted again pretty heavily. Uh, same with Solemn, although I think Solemn definitely more. Uh, but it is just a really cool piece to see again the original artwork, the uh, the original set symbol, all that stuff is just so it's so key to me uh, when it comes to collecting. And so for me, that was exciting. Uh, I was really stoked to have this. So I know I'm kind of cheating a little bit because this was already in a video, but I think it was worth it. But here we go, guys. So. We're moving on to the last three cards. John, if you're watching, uh, because I do believe you you oftentimes catch up on these videos, thank you. Uh, I did get it. I didn't tell you I got it because I wanted to share it in this video. Uh, this is Foil Glorious Sunrise, <clears throat> which isn't in the grand scheme of things anywhere close to something like a Null Rod or anything like that. But collecting is not all about actual monetary value. In this case, the next three cards are very special to me because A, they were given to me by a very good friend, John, as you guys know, uh, but they also have meaning behind them. Uh, and we'll talk about that meaning with each of these because I do think it's important to do so. For anybody that doesn't know, during uh, John and I's first little endeavor together, um, we did a, a little mini series called It Is What It Is, uh, where we played a lot of jank decks, a lot of silly decks, and we had an absolute blast doing that series. You guys didn't seem to love it as much, uh, which is fine, but it was a blast to do. Uh, and so John and I really bonded over that. All of these cards have something to do there. Uh, but Glorious Sunrise was a card that we both found an affinity for. We both love this card. It's such a great value piece uh, for that series. We played it a good bit. Uh, and it actually turned into our podcast, uh, which I know we have been missing a handful of episodes lately. A lot of that's just due to time, but uh, that spurred on what became an actual content piece on its own. Uh, and so I was really happy to see that he included this. I think this is absolutely amazing. Really cool little piece here. Uh, moving on to the next one. We have a showcase version of Scoot Swarm. Uh, again, another card that we both found an absolute affinity for. We love this card. Uh, collectively, I don't know that there's a card we love more than, than Scoot Swarm. Being able to break this card uh, multiple times on the series and just in general playing the card uh, is an absolute blast. And so we kind of shared our love for Scoot Swarm through that series. We did a lot of things with it to try and break it, do some crazy life gain shenanigans, all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, and it was a blast. So we really did enjoy uh, the little Scoot Swarm. He's actually about to rotate out of standard. Sad day, but uh, very, very happy uh, again that he included this card because it's really awesome. And then the final card, which I did not expect, uh, he sent this, he told me he wrote on the back of it, and we'll talk about it, uh, is Triska Decafile. And if you look at the back, he actually wrote on there, how do you pronounce this? There it is, <laughs> from Country Fried, guys. Uh, it's Triska Decafile, uh, for the record. Uh, he included this card because we did do uh, some funny stuff, bit of an inside thing there, but uh, we did some funny stuff with Triska Decafile at one point as well. Uh, definitely a great include. So thank you so much, John. And thank you to you guys. This is an absolute blast. That was a special series. I hope you guys go back and watch it because it was a really special thing uh, that actually led to what we are right now, uh, which is a shared kind of platform between John and I. Uh, absolute blast. So I know this was a bit of a nostalgia trip for me, probably less so for you guys, but it was really fun for me. Let's wrap this one up. All right, guys. So like I said, what a special episode. This one was really cool to me. Uh, we'll of course have our stats up on screen for you guys so you can check everything out, but uh, I can't thank John enough. I cannot, uh, not just for obviously sending some really fun cards that we get to add to the collection binder. They will forever be eternalized there. Uh, but on top of it, he has been an absolute blast to have as a channel partner, as just a friend. 
and just somebody that we can share in this amazing game together. And truthfully, guys, uh, I can't say this enough. That is what this series in particular is about. Uh, collecting means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Uh, sometimes it's just getting a bunch of really silly bulk cards and having some fun with them. Sometimes it's making money off of the game, trying to invest in the game and everywhere in between. You've got people who are just enjoying the fact that they get to open up a pack today. Uh, and I hope that you do. I hope that you enjoy it. I hope that you pick up cards that you really do love and not just, I don't know, just kind of flippantly go through it because I think I think there's something special about this game. I think there's something very special about collecting. And John and I are a prime example of uh, how it does bring not only content creators, but just people together in a way that is really, really beneficial for everybody. Uh, at least that's the hope. Um, and so I, I truly thank you guys for watching this series. I really do thank John for making this one a special episode. Uh, it will be titled, How Do You Pronounce This? Um, <laughs> and I think, you know, just the, the game itself as a whole and the community as a whole, because uh, this is, I don't know, really special, uh, really, really special. Um, I don't know exactly how to put that into words, so I know I'm flailing a little bit, but just really important, guys. So thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, I know it was a little bit disjointed, but absolute blast, guys. Thank you so much. We'll have another one next week, so do not worry. We will be back on track for it. So I love you guys. Have a fantastic day. Don't forget to enjoy the game and happy collecting. <laughs>